This is the Algebra 1 end of course practice test uh, for the Tennessee EOC pro, uh, program. This is question number 43. It's kind of a beast when you look at it. There's a couple ways that you can get this thing done. It's not as hard as it looks, but uh, I'll show you a real simple way at the end. So just stick through the long version if you hate it. Now that says what if x is not equals uh, to negative 5 over 2. The reason they put that there is if you plug negative 5 over 2 in the bottom, it gives you a 0. You're not allowed to divide by 0 in a fraction. Uh, so that would be an exclusion in the domain, but we're not going to worry about that right now. What we are going to do is sort of start to factor these things out. So I'm going to figure out, this has that square root, that's a little scary, but instead of dealing with it right now, I think it's going to be a better idea to take a look at what we get to see if we can do something with it that'll make our lives much easier later. So I'm going to factor both 2x squared plus 7x plus 5, and then that 4x squared plus 20x plus 25. So I'm going to do 2x squared plus 7x plus 5. Now I can't, or I could go through and make factor lists for everything and spend an hour, or I can use slide and divide. When I slide and divide, it's when I have a number other than 1 in front of x, I'm going to circle it. I'm going to slide it over here to show multiply. 2 times 5 is 10. So I've got this going for myself. Now I factor this out. Uh, I'm going to make a factor list for 10. And by the way, because this is plus, I know that my answers are both the same uh, at the bottom. I'm going to have an x and x. They're either going to be plus, both plus or both minus. This says that they're both plus. Now, if this is plus and minus, they aren't mixed. They're both minus. But in this case, they're both plus. When I have the same, whether they're both minus or both plus, I have to add the factors to get to that middle number. Factors of 10 are 1 and 10 and 2 and 5. Well, I can add 2 and 5 and get 7. So I'm going to put 2 here and I'm going to put 5 here. So that's me factoring out the top. Oh, wait, not quite. I did the slide, now I have to do the divide. When I slid this over, I can't just, that's good enough for me. I have to come back and divide each of these terms by that 2. Divide by 2 here, divide by 2 here. Now, 2 divided by 2 does work, so I'm going to reduce this to x plus 1. Now, 2 divided by, or 5 divided by 2 does not give me an integer answer. It gives me a fraction, so I don't want a fraction there. It would be ridiculous to factor with a fraction. So I'm actually going to bump slide this 2 back in front of this x. So my final factorization is 2x plus 5. So that's my factorization of the top. Now let me factor the bottom, not considering that square root. But I'm going to keep in my head that, oh yeah, it's a square root. So I've got this, 4x squared plus 20x plus 25. I'm going to take this 4 and slide it over here. So it becomes x squared plus 20x plus 100. Now I can factor here. This says that both the signs below are going to be either positive or negative. It doesn't tell me which. This sign tells me which. It says they're both positive. Now I can make a factor list of 100. I've got 1 and 100, 2 and 50, 4 and 25, 5 and 20, um, 10 and 10. Those are my basic factors of 100. Now since these two signs are the same, I'm going to add factors to try to find 20. Well, 10 plus 10 equals 20, right? So those are my factors. Now, that's the slide part, and then the factor. Then I'm going to divide. So 10x divided by 4. Well, that doesn't work, but I do have to think, oh, yeah, 10 over 4 does reduce to an improper fraction of 5 over 2. That will come in handy here in just a minute. So before I do the bump slide back, I do have to reduce it back, but I am going to bump slide that 2 back in front of the x. So it becomes 2x plus 5. Well, this is the same thing, so it becomes 2x plus 5 as well. Now, that's a lot of work. I came up with this and this. So those are useful only in the context of this problem when I show you what they look like as a fraction. That's a lot of work, right? But it still has this little scary square root there. But if you think about it, this 2x plus 5 is exactly the same as this 2x plus 5, which means it's this times itself, which means that the bottom part turns into this. The denominator turns into square root of 2x plus, uh, 2 times x plus 5 squared. 
which is a very good thing for us because that will actually cancel out. Now, when I cancel out, I need to um, take this square and this square root, and they just cancel each other. So this becomes x plus 1 over 2x plus 5 over just the 2x plus 5 because this gets rid of this. So now I have this on the top and on the bottom, so they cancel, and my final answer is x plus 1. Wow, that's a long way to go, right? That took me five minutes just to do that one problem. Uh, but I'm going to show you another method that might be much easier. If you have um, a graphing calculator, and you have a button that makes an x, or a variable term, mine's equal to 10. If it's not equal to 10, it's easy to fix. You just go in and graph something. You hit like equals, type in like 3x plus 5 and graph it. It'll change your x value. Now, I can plug in the top part, and this works most of the time. It doesn't always work, so I'm hopeful it works here. Uh, because this is a divide question, I'm going to put that top part in parentheses. So instead of putting in uh, it as a uh, fraction, I'm going to put it in as divide. I don't know why I felt like I needed to say that again. I think I was trying to make a greater point about something, but I don't have no idea what it was, so it doesn't really matter. That's the top part, and I'm going to divide that, another parentheses here, make sure you have that parentheses, and then I'm going to put something under the square root. What's going under the square root is 4x squared plus 20x plus 25. I'm going to close that out. So if you're using like a TI-73, it's going to have, a, it, you're going to have a parentheses, a square root and a parentheses that opens up, and at the end you'll have to close with two parentheses. So if you're using something other than the TI-84 TI plus, you're going to have to do something else. Now hit enter, and you get a value of 11. As you can see, if you get out of the glare. It's hard to get out of the glare with this thing. So I get an answer of 11. All I'm going to do is plug in my answer choices and see if I can get 11. So if I type in that negative 2x squared minus 27x minus 30, which is a fourth answer here or for D, see I get negative 500? Well, that's not 11. The number has no value, by the way. This is just a trick that happened to work a few times. This is if you really get stuck time. See how this is 11 and so is this? It means the answer, x plus 1, that gives you 11, the same as the question, is the answer. So you might want to write 11 or whatever your answer number is right here. It doesn't have to be 11. If you have a different x value, it's going to give you a different number. Your a matches it. So that's another way to do number 43. Choose whatever method you like.